Welcome back. Well, today we're talking two-wheel drive. I got laid out in front of you here. I've kind of already done all the work. Jumped the gun a little bit, but uh, what we got going on is this is falling over, but it is the RPM. Uh, let's see if I can get a focus shot here. Hybrid gearbox housing. Now this here basically replaces the whole ass end of the truck. It changes out the stock diff case, which I wanted to do because of stripped screws as well as the wheelie bar setup on this truck is a joke. So what I have done, da -da -da, when I blew another little bit of, actually what happened is I, sold, I sell lots of things on consignment at my local hobby shop. And a set of my shocks sold, so I used that money to buy all these nice shiny new parts. So what we're gonna do, I've now basically I've I've went through two or three of these. Now these are the stock, not even they don't even come on the grave digger. You have to buy it, and I'm close to twenty bucks I think at your local hobby store, maybe a little cheaper online. And they break in the same spot every time. So you can see that screw right there pulls right through the plastic and in this case the that piece even snapped off so I just think this is a horrible horrible design the adjustable parts fail from the start you can never keep the damn thing together always flop around behind the truck so if, if you don't have one of these yet and you're looking for alternatives take it from somebody who's had this truck for a good year and a half and uh, knows that you're gonna waste your money. I've done it twice. I had the green one and then actually what happened was I had one break off of my Stampede 4x4 and I pilfered a part off of it and managed to put it all back together and then yeah but I bought two of these anyway so save yourself the headache and just go RPM from the start. Now what this will do it's very very similar to the setup on this truck here. As you see, it's got the actual bumper with a low vis wheelie bar, which actually hangs down below the truck, which is actually a nice feature, I think. So you can leave this off if you like, or you can run it. So I'm gonna run it, a little extra protection for the back of the truck. Might look funny, but we'll see. Cross that bridge when we get to it. So, this first video, this will be probably a two or three part series I'll make on this. Uh, this is going to be the gearbox itself, so stay tuned if you're interested in looking for the rest of them or checking out the rest of them. I'll put them up here the next couple days. So basically what RPM, I've put all the gears in here now, but this is the gearbox, nice and new. Now RPM's changed the design quite a bit over the stock version in the sense that you can see there's no... Where do the hinge pins go? Where do your control arms bolt up, right? These ones here, they bolt up right through the diff case themselves. In this one they give you two different adjustments. You get a zero degree and a three degree which allow you to, to tune the toe of the rear tires as well as this. This is a solid aluminum plate which allows you to bolt the motor up directly to that. This is another thing I used to think was kind of silly about the Traxxas one was the fact you were hanging like me. I had a, well it's not a huge motor but big enough. You know you're hanging all that weight off plastic eventually it, it warps and stretches and it's just not the greatest mesh if you will um, for a long can motor anyway I put a like the one in there the 550 can style motor and that's just too heavy of a motor for these trucks so anyway so I went ahead and sealed my diff it looks wet but that's not that's actually an epoxy it's rock hard now and yeah went through cleaned up when you're in here it's a good idea to clean up all of your uh, bearings go through you gotta transfer everything over this pin also comes out of the old one and you need to transfer it over to the new and one thing I want to mention are these uh, I don't know the name of this thing it's a shaft or jack shaft or whatever I've had this thing break two or three times and I went and bought a new one. No, I, I had it break the first time. I went and bought a new one. And then it bro broke the second time. And I decided, you know what, this is silly. 
the pin that they use on it is like a hollow little cheap ass little pin. So I took a carbon HS or HSS steel drill bit, a really small one, cut it to length there, ground it down flat to the top, and uh, pounded it down in there and just put a little tap of uh, CA glue to hold it all in just in case. And this thing's been holding up for who knows how long now. I don't see it ever breaking again. So that's an easy mod. If you ever break that pin or you have a problem with the old one shearing off, just poke it out of there. You just got to get something small. You can pound the broken piece out and uh, you can use a really small drill bit to fix it up. Keep in mind they're smaller than the actual pins, like the dry pins that go in your axles and stuff. The hole for that is smaller. Traxxas uses a smaller one for some reason, just so you have to go buy a new one, I guess. But the new one, is, it's weird. It's like a piece of folded steel, and it's like it's hollow in the middle. Like, it's silly. So, anyway, that's that. So, transfer everything off. You can see the inside. It's too it's nice. And the plastic's nice. So, I've transferred everything back over now. I'm going to seal it up and start with the reassembly. Essentially when you pull the truck apart to do this, you don't need to take everything apart. Uh, you just need to unscrew the back of the shock tower. They say you might you might want to take this off, depending, we'll see here. I might eat those words in a second. Um, unscrew the six from the bottom, skid plate there, pop your rear hinge pins, unscrew your drive shafts, done deal. Should lift right out. Uh, and then take off the wheelie bar and all that kind of stuff, well, if you have one, obviously. So, One thing I want to mention, when you're finished with the conversion and everything, put it back together. And for me, I know that before you bolt it all up and go through all that, like I, I slid mine back together, and then spin the shaft. Like pinch the case all together, hold it like it's going to be, don't screw it yet, but just hold it there. And spin all the gears. I had binding just in one spot. What the hell? I went through and I found I had one clogged tooth. Just clogged with something, I don't know, it was in there a rock or something hard. I don't know, but it came out. A big long piece. So make sure you do that. It sucks to get it all assembled and then have to pull it all apart because you have a binding gear and whatever. So you can tell I've sealed my, my gear or my uh, differential here. Now there's a video showing you how to do that if you're interested. And one more thing is don't forget to throw a little grease in there as well. I'm just using a white grease. I'm actually going to throw a little bit of my Avid slide grease in there. This is made for bearings, but it'll work great in this application. You can use any kind of a black grease, uh, white lithium based grease, just something based, uh, something that will handle high temperatures anyway. Okay, so one thing I really pride RPM on is their attention to detail. Their, their directions are very thorough. Um, following these you should not have much of a problem with the installation they give you all the missing parts that you need however you do need some of the stock parts which in the case of this truck um, they are Phillips hardware and stuff it, you're almost better off to go pick up a, a few metric screws like you need that at, uh, M3x23 button head and you can use a bit longer actually I put a 25 mil in and it was fine uh, but you kind of need that hardware, and I would highly recommend going all hex. I guess what I'm doing. I have a boatload of different uh, hardware and stuff around. It's also nice, like I picked up uh, screw kits on uh, Flea Bay there, uh, full slash screw kits for fairly cheap uh, from the chop shops there, so you can have a look for those. So basically the next step, once you get everything transferred over and sandwich the two together, or actually you can do this beforehand, uh, is to bolt this little piece on here, this plastic piece. You'll notice they come in the parts tree you get, you get two of them. Uh, there's one there, and the other one's on the truck already. So if you look at the drawings, they show you how to orientate it. Basically these two bolts onto the thing and then your gear cover bolts onto that one now. So just orientate it right, you bolt it up with the two screws, and then you have to use your own long 25 mil on the bottom here for this screw and then uh, they're supplied I think it's an 18 or 16 up top there 16 so yeah once we get to there we just keep plugging away just following the directions
So here she is, all transferred over. Got the slipper on there. Bolted up, the motor's transferred over. Gotta say, I'm a big fan of this thing already. Left a couple screws out simply because of the fact I'm putting these on right away, so I'll know, I know I'm gonna have to swap stuff around anyway. So I'm just gonna explain a little bit how it goes. Essentially, there's two bolts in behind here that are the M3s. They're supposed to be these guys here, the M3x25s. However, I found that the one right there that comes through was too long by about two mils. Whereas the other one right there is perfect. So I don't know RPM what the deal is with that. They can only be for that. There's no possible way they can be for any other thing because they're countersunk screws with a flathead and there's only two countersunks on this plate so so now the thing that's a little different about this is you bolt up the I can't even remember what you call them now the rear side mount I guess they call it they got a right side and right side rear mount <laughs> left side rear mount but these are essentially what the hinge pins attach through and they attach the control arm to the vehicle so one side gets a big bolt like one of these right up from the bottom of the truck and it comes up through here the other one same kind of deal except it gets a jam nut which is this on top so i'm not sure oh no they both get nuts they both get jam nuts so this one comes up through the top it gets a jam nut on here other one comes up it also gets a jam nut so you might need a little crescent wrench or something to make this happen. So I left those out. I'm going to drop it in the truck and then bolt them up that way. Or I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just bolt them up. So if you see, you actually have to take these off. I mean, the zero degree ones are the ones you want. You can try the three degree if you like, but it's just going to give you a ton of toe on the rear. and I don't want that. Anyway, you have to drop these in first then uh, slide in the rear end here uh, you can bolt in the top two if you like from the shock tower and then you're gonna have to bolt up from the bottom so it's smarter to just bolt it in first from the top here okay so once you have the whole gearbox bolted up from these top two uh, I used M12s 3x12 button heads uh, you take your, I, can't remember, I don't know what they call these, but they're, anyway, they're labeled right and left, and that's driver's right and left. If you're sitting in the driver's seat, this would be, you know, the right of the car, and that would be the left of the car. So the right, this is probably going to be the trickiest part, because you got to hold that little lock nut there uh, while you thread it up from the bottom. Same with this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in and then from the bottom you just have two countersinks now because it's kind of changed the way that this works so it's just these two and i'm going to thread it with brand new uh m tw or three by ten three by ten uh but that we countersunk flatheads so i think it's going to look a lot better just uh, with all hex hardware i really hated the fact they used phillips hardware throughout in this truck it's kind of a letdown but anyway there you have it. It's all installed now. Uh, one thing, oh, there's a couple things I need to mention here. What are they now? Um, they don't include, well, basically, I don't know, if you're running a digger or one of these kind of trucks, you know it has all metric hardware, so you need to get, or I mean it has all like fill it like this. Well, if you look at mine now, it's all hex. So you need 3x10s here to screw into the diff case you also need m4 by 12s and they give you these two so you need two 4 by 12s and two m3 by 10s flathead counter countersunk so just uh if you're interested in knowing those measurements and that's basically it. it looks really good it feels really good i like the fact that it adds that big giant plate of metal on the side there uh, which acts as a nice heat sink i don't have the gear cover yet but it's coming and I got a new set of MIP race duty axles coming for this. So I'll be putting those on next week. Stay tuned for that. 
And yeah, if you're interested on looking on the wheelie bar and how the rear bumper and all that looks when it's done up in uh, gravedigger fashion, keep an eye out for the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button for me, and we'll see you next time. Well, I decided rather than putting up three videos, I'm just going to do one um, with uh, links at the beginning so you can jump back and forth to the appropriate part of the video if you're looking for just one or the other. So it's not over yet. <laughs> so it looks a little different here. What I've done now, this is the bumper mount for your rear bumper or wheelie bar. This is an RPM part. Now, I just wanted to go through and mention that as I mentioned in the earlier video actually, the biggest flaw that I figure here with this is the stock wheelie bar setup. As it's broken several times. This piece here actually goes in the middle there. And this is how that Traxxas designed it. Well, once you put this rear bumper mount on, you I actually remove the broken piece. And if you so choose, you can actually just bolt this part right up to it and it eliminates all the flaws of the bottom of the wheelie bar, right? Because you don't have those tabs hanging over and blah blah blah. Or you can go with the other option like I'm going to do and that is the rear bumper. So you actually need the bumper here first and then the low vis wheelie bar will attach to it. So the bumper number there is 81002. They also offered in blue and chrome, I believe, or possibly green. I'm not sure. I don't think green, but blue and chrome for sure. And it comes with all the hardware again. So this here is a pretty quick install. Uh, you do need a little longer screw here. This actually, this lock nut actually goes when you put your gear cover on. You got to put that on. So I just put a shorter screw in for now, uh, as I don't have my gear cover yet. It's in the mail. But it's pretty simple, it's just three pieces, and they have little kind of buttons almost, they kind of pop into each other, screw it together with four screws, and then uh, it bolts up to the transmission case, it's pretty labeled, it's all clearly labeled, and uh, I love how they put the screw table on there, even on the other one, for the original, if you're having problems finding your lengths of screws, they have the the legend up at the top so you can just drop your screw on it and make sure it's the right size going into the right hole. So I'm going to go ahead now and mount up the bumper. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just the two pieces really. You got the main back part, nice and shiny. <laughs> and then the braces themselves, which I'll snap off here. Uh, not sure which way it goes yet, but. And there we go. So there she is, all finished up. I think it looks just fine. If anything, I need to put a little bit beefier bumper on the front end, even though I have the RPM wide front bumper. One thing I'm thinking now too is I might actually take this digger and just black it right out, buy the black pieces for it, front bumper and the uh, skid plates. I think it'll look good in all black. So there you go, that's the rear bumper wheelie bar bumper mount and the hybrid gearbox installation. Hope you liked the video. I think it looks pretty awesome. I'm going to put some LEDs in here next. Wire those up all nice and tidy. I, I am getting a multicolored LED set with ultraviolet lights and all the chrome bezels to hold them. So I will be making custom LED wiring kits soon. If you're interested you can message me and I am going to be custom building them and I'll be making some generic sets as well to put up on eBay for sale. So if you're interested, let me know. I'll be building custom kits for pretty much anyone, and I'm not going to gouge everybody. You know, um, I have a lot of knowledge when it comes to that kind of stuff, and I like to share it and help those out who need it because I know how expensive this hobby can be, and it is unreal. So there you go, if you're not a fan of the bumper, keep in mind you can't keep that off and just slap on the Traxxas wheelie bar or leave the bumper off altogether and just run these, but I think that would look kind of silly with just these two back braces and no back bumper. So there you have it, thanks for watching guys, hope to see you again.